Welcome to another episode, guys. You know, I've had a lot of questions regarding the neutral safety switch or the inhibitor switch, and how do you, in fact, test the switch itself? I do have a video uploaded showing how to replace the switch, but when I shot that, it was during the winter time, there was snow on the ground, and I just didn't have enough time to go ahead and test or show you how to test the sensor itself. But today I'll show that. We'll go ahead and go through how you can test the, uh, the, the inhibitor switch and all that you need is a multimeter. And essentially what we'll be doing is looking to see if we have continuity. Continuity just means that there's an, an electrical connection between two points. Uh, if we don't have any continuity, then there's a break somewhere in that connection and you need to replace the sensor. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and let's begin. All right, now the neutral safety switch is located toward the bottom. It's toward the front of the vehicle. This happens to be a Nissan Maxima in 1997. But on this vehicle, it's toward the bottom on the driver's side. Last time I shot this video, uh, there was snow on the ground, and this is the way that I got to it. However, today we have the car in the garage, and it is quicker if you obtain or get access to the switch right here. Now this is a plastic cover and you have a couple of screws holding it on. So I'm going to remove this cover and we'll have quick access to the sensor. Now once you remove that plastic tab, this is what you're going to see. This happens to be the transmission. And right in the front, right here, this is the inhibitor switch. And of course you have a, uh, this is the gear selector. So in fact, when you change, when you put the vehicle from reverse to neutral to drive, this whole system, this whole lever is moving. And the sensor, really the whole point about this sensor is to make sure that the car doesn't crank while it's in uh, reverse or drive, forward drive. It will only allow the car to crank and park in neutral. So if this sensor starts to go, your car may not crank at all because the sensor has no idea what gear you're in or the sensor thinks you're in a reverse or forward gear. So what I'm going to do is I'll clean up the top of the motor because there are two electrical harnesses and they lead up toward the engine bay and there's so much clutter up there that you won't clearly see what we have to do. So I'll clean up the top. Uh, in fact, if you're curious what I'm doing, just take a look. I'll, I'll include a link right now for the first uh, video that I've uploaded and I show in detail how to clear out the whole top of the engine if you're curious. Um, but anyway, I'll clear out the top, we'll have clear access to these uh, harnesses and then we can go ahead and start the testing. Okay, so everything is cleaned out here and if you take a look, these are the two harnesses that lead to the sensor. There's your sensor right down there. So let's go ahead and unplug these two sensors, these harnesses, oops, sorry about that, we're going to unplug these two harnesses right here, and then let's do the uh, continuity testing. So you just press down the tab here, and these things can be really tight, so just put a lot of force. There you go. So that's your first one. You have another one right here, and there you go. So now we need to check or do our testing from these terminals because of course these harnesses lead to the sensor. This goes toward the computer of the vehicle. We're not concerned about this right now. We just want to make sure that the, the sensor is okay. Now once you disconnect those two harnesses, go ahead and also disconnect the shift boot leading to the sensor. And I'll show you in a minute why you really want to do this. But just go ahead and remove this right from the sensor. Okay, so now this is free and clear, and I'll show you why you, you really need to do this. Now the next step is we need the multimeter. Specifically, we need the ohm setting. Now if you've never used a multimeter, they're pretty simple to use. In this case, again, we need the ohm setting. Let me just get my leads uh, free here. So, as you can see, we have, we have a black and a red wire and you have three inputs in this case. So in this case, we have the black wire going to the black input. 
And then you have red wire, which would either go to the 10 amp or you have volts, ohms, and milliamps. In this case, since we're doing ohms, we lead it to that input, all right? So again, we need the ohm setting and we need the audible, this audible selection here. As you can see, it gives you that, uh, this marking, letting you know that you're on, that you are on a, uh, an audible setting. So if you cross, my battery's a little, little low here, but if you cross these two uh, leads here, you have an audible uh, alarm letting you know that you've completed a circuit or you have continuity in other words. So that's what we need to test on these harnesses. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. Let's start with this first one. This only has two leads coming out of, out of this harness and just go ahead make a connection. Let me just make sure you guys can see this. Make your connection and we should have continuity which we do as you can hear. So this harness is in good shape. It's working correctly. Now for the second harness, this is a little bit more involved. First step is we need to make sure that the inhibitor switch is in the park position. So I'll, I'll include a, a picture right now and on the upper right hand side of the screen, just showing that the inhibitor switch is in the park position. Then what we need to do is check terminals three and four. Now that happens to be the top left and the bottom left on this vehicle. Now really to do this test, obtain the factory repair manual for your vehicle because every car is different. I mean, you could do this by trial and error, but really get the repair manual for your car um, just because you can essentially do any repair and uh, including this one. So we'll do terminal three and terminal four and we have continuity. Now, another way you can test this if you don't have a factory repair manual you could do trial and error. In other words, let's say I have no idea which two points to touch. If I just start going along here, you don't hear anything at all. And that's because only two points make continuity in the park position, okay? So these two points, nada. This point, nothing. This point, nothing. But when I get to the bottom, there is continuity. So I know that this happens to be for park. So this is working correctly. Now the next step, is to check the reverse position. So we'll, we'll remove the, um, excuse me, we'll move the inhibitor switch to the reverse position and then we'll check terminals three and terminals five. Park into reverse. All right, so we're in the reverse position. So terminal three is always on the upper left here on this vehicle. And terminal five happens to be on the bottom as well. So here we go. And we have continuity. Again, if you touch anything else, you won't hear anything. But if you touch terminal three in this case and terminal five, it works. So continue to do this test through neutral drive, second, first gear, and see if you gain continuity throughout all gears, and you should. Now one other thing you could do is reattach the control cable back onto the sensor and then check for continuity and you want to make sure they still have continuity once that control cable is reattached to the sensor. Then get in the vehicle, put the vehicle into reverse and check for continuity. And then get back in the car, put the car, put the gear lever into neutral and then check for continuity and so forth and do that throughout the gears. This is just a safety check to make sure that the, that the control cable is properly adjusted. Now if, if you're not getting continuity here, then go ahead and just adjust the, uh, the control cable. Now one more thing before we wrap this up. This is in regards to sometimes if you try to crank the car or start your car and nothing happens in park. And if you shift it into neutral and the car cranks, sometimes you just need an adjustment. And in other words, you want to make sure that, that this lever or this lever here is in alignment with the sensor. Now to do that, it's pretty simple. What you want to do, let me just get a ratchet here. First, you just need to loosen up the three nuts holding on the sensor here. So just loosen them up. These happen to be a uh, 5 16 
of an inch. And there's another one. Oh, you got to put this in neutral. Okay, make sure it's in neutral. And we got one more right here. Let's watch your fingers. All right, that's good enough. Now what you need to do is, I'm going to use a uh, an Allen key. If you have a pin, that will also work. But on top here, you just place a pin or a uh, an Allen key, and you want to make contact. Oh, you want to make contact with this other lever right here, and this essentially aligns everything. So. When you start the car, the vehicle knows that you really are in park and it will allow you to start the vehicle. Uh, if these two points are off, sometimes you have to shake the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, transmission lever and then the car will crank. And that's just because these two points uh, are not exactly in sync with each other. So just go ahead and also check this as well. And then what I like to do is keep this, the pin or Allen wrench or Allen key, whatever you're using, keep it in place and just tighten everything back down.